Industrial Revolution, as well as the previous Industrial Revolutions, have had the potential on one hand to raise the global income levels and on the other hand to improve the quality of human life. It will affect and it will have a major impact on business, on government and on people's lives. From an evolutionary point of view, the fourth industrial revolution is grounded and built on the previous revolution. And because it supports the digital technologies, it's often called the digital revolution. It can set to it can be said that its objective assumed the fusion of technologies that bring the physical world closer to the biological and digital world. We talk a little bit more about the challenges of renewable energy this time in the fourth industrial revolution. We're joined by Ms. Nelly Sue Makubani, an electrical engineer and chairperson of the Maitling Energy Solutions. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you so much to, for you to uh, inviting me in this. Uh, um, uh, yes. Uh, so Thank let's you. let's talk about this. I mean, it, it's such a, a huge topic to talk about uh, renewable energy solutions within the fourth industrial revolution. Can you just lay the groundwork for us? Uh, what is the springboard from which we're working? Oh, thank you so much for that. Um, South Africa is one of the uh, amazing uh, countries when it comes to uh, industrial revolution. We have got, we are actually a, a country that has got at least a um, eight uh, uh, percentage uh, in the in the country where we can be able to provide. A, uh, the, the the amazing amazing um, uh, 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 um, amazing 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 uh, minerals for industrial revolution, and uh, uh, I'm of the view that we need to make sure that as a country we have got e enough energy to make sure that we are able to provide uh, the, those um, uh, minerals for a um, min uh, fourth industrial revolution. Mm. So basically, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so basically, let's, uh, let's bring some of the advances uh, closer to reality, we are within this new normal now in terms of COVID-19 and we've seen obviously the need to uh, improve in this digital era, this space. And it's really also brought starkly into focus the challenges that we face. And uh, artificial intelligence has been something that people have feared especially given the current situation that we're in now. Uh, talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm of the view that South Africa is, is, is a carbon-based economy. And uh, it's very, very important that we actually um, 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 what is the word? Uh, we, we actually make sure that we reduce that um, a carbon-based uh, economy, but having said that, make no, make no. In, in we need to be able to look at ourselves as um, a, an opportunity to make sure that we are an economy that is going to be very, very important going into the future, uh, where we are going to not only reduce the carbon. A, a base, but also more than anything else, we need to make sure that we are providing hmm. safe and 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 a, a, a safe energy for the country to make sure then that we are able to uh, provide okay. yes, hmm. yeah, provide energy for the for the country to make sure then that we are able to be uh, uh, providing uh, energy for the, the for those any for those minerals for the fourth industrial revolution 
One of the things that you're uh, passionate about is uh, global energy uh, production. I, I want to know, though, when you say that there is a need to integrate at least renewable energy uh, solutions or resources within a smart overall network, what are you speaking about here? Yes, absolutely. My, my my passion is making sure that we reduce uh, our carbon footprint, but more than anything else, we need to make sure that uh, this country is going to be providing renewable energy, but more than anything else, we need to make sure that this country is um, uh, 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 providing the, the what to call renewable energy and it's making sure then that we are in a position that uh, we can be in a, in a space that we can be right there at the top of uh, um, energy provision where it's clean but also more than anything else we are making sure that uh, women are a part of that a revolutionary um, energy uh, solution. So how can women be a part of that? Because uh, this is what we're doing. We are talking about the plight of women, the changes, the strides that they've made, and uh, obviously some of the challenges that they face. Absolutely. The, from where I'm sitting is that uh, re renewable energy is going to be a very, very important a uh, um, uh, uh, evolution for this country but more than anything else women are actually are not only the um, um, a, a providers of energy but more than anything else women should be uh, also right there to decide what happens uh, at uh, energy solutions so uh, Matlang energy solutions and also empower women the solutions are basically are saying that how can we make sure that our children uh, going into the future are making are providing uh, energy solutions that are cleaner and also uh yeah cleaner and more than anything else um they are there to make sure then that we actually pro come up with a, a new energy revolution. So for me, from where I'm sitting, is that it's important that um, going into the future, we have to, to come up with a different energy solutions. Mm. I, I, I'd like to use ESCOM as an example of being a vehicle for that. Perhaps you can give us some practical uh, uh, examples. You used to work there. What, what areas did you identify that women could play a role in this? Absolutely. Actually, ESCOM is basically a, a revolutionizing, revol revolutionizing where they come from. Um, suddenly, ESCOM has, is, has decided that it's going to, to what to call, uh, 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 to, 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 to be different. And uh, one of those different uh, uh, issues is, um, is, um, is making sure that ESCOM is no longer going to be what it was. ESCOM has always been um, a solution for South Africa. ESCOM has always been there to provide our energy solutions. But now ESCOM has, has decided that it is going to um, be different. And uh, one of the issues that uh, ESCOM is looking at is to is to is basically looking at a different um, industry. It's basically saying that let's look at what can we do different okay. amongst other problems uh, or rather amongst other issues is to making sure that we, you have um, um, 
an ESCOM that says that, hmm. ah, let's um, have a, like a, what you call it, a road. Mm-hmm. So ESCOM is going no longer going to be a, 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 a normal um, provider of energy. ESCOM mm-hmm. is simply saying that let's bring other people to provide energy solutions. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Nede Sue Makubani, an electrical engineer and chairperson of Matling Energy Solutions, uh, part of our uh, features looking at uh, women on this uh, Women's Day, the role that they've played in changing the course of our country. A